guys. What's up? It's Jean here from One Down Jean Up, and today we're going to do a little comparison. Come along with me. Okay. Okay! Hey guys, it's Jean here from One Down Jean Up. Today I'm doing a little bit of a head-to-head -head comparison between the Triumph Bonneville, my bike, and the Indian Scout. I was doing this same comparison for myself when I was purchasing the Bonneville, and you see which one I liked better, but I wanted to take you guys through the thought process that I was having at the time. Follow along. Come along with me. Got the little side key here, that's fun. Monkey! That Grom's wheel is like another foot out. Is that a thing? All right, here we are on the Indian Scout. One of the first things that I'm noticing is the very low seat height. Like I've said before, I'm about 5'6 or 5'7, and this seat is extremely approachable. Oh, hello. Definitely feels like someone who is shorter than me would easily, easily be able to ride this. When I do flat foot this, my knees are bent, so I think someone a good few inches shorter than me could ride this very confidently. When we're comparing the power so far to my Bonneville, it feels about the same. It feels like this has a little bit more pull to it. It seems like this may be a little bit more torquey than the Bonneville. It's just a little bit quicker. I am taking note as I ride it on the size of the gearbox. One thing I love about the Bonneville is how each gear is so long. I don't usually shift out of first until like 25 miles an hour or a little bit above that. It seems like this is about the same so far. I've only got to experience first and second gear so far but hopefully we'll be able to open it up a little bit more soon and see what it's about. I do appreciate the self-canceling turn signals. That's one thing that I don't have on the Bonneville that the Scout does have. I am always leaving my turn signal on in chorus. It's like, hey, turn signal. It kind of becomes a game. I really like the forward controls on this guy. For my longer legs, it's very comfortable. They're not as forward as something like the Heritage but I do appreciate them quite a bit. Where my legs are sitting on the tank is very nice. It kind of just goes with like the natural curve of the tank. And it doesn't feel like the tank is too wide or too thin. What I love about the Scout is that it's a very nice entry point to the Indian brand. You can definitely tour on a Scout. There's plenty of people who have done it, especially with the new Batwing fairing that they've made that you can get. You can also throw some bags on here. That's one thing that really made me think twice about getting the Bonneville versus the Scout. Don't get me wrong, we talked about this before. There are people who tour on Bonnevilles and they have a great time doing it. Just this is more of like your classic cruiser style, so I think it may be a little bit easier to do that. And so we're in third, 3800 RPM at 45 miles an hour. It's 
Did I not strap my helmet? I did not strap my helmet. Oops. Oh well. Tuck it in there. But anyways, we're going a little bit over the speed limit. It seems to be really happy in the 35 to 4,000 RPMs. It's very comfortable. As this is a brand new motorcycle, we are still in the break-in period, so I'm not quite feeling the engine braking power quite yet. Let's see how many miles. Yeah, 17 miles on it. There's this little trigger up by my left index finger where you can cycle through the different menu options. I think this is a fantastic bike. It takes that turn really nicely. Oh, you <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Break-in period, getting stuck in neutral. I used to do that all the time on the CB300. Oh, puppy. Oh, he's pooping. <laughs> Anyways, I used to do that all the time, get stuck in neutral on the 300. Everyone would make fun of me for it. This is a really comfortable bike. There's no fairing, as you can see, no windshield or anything. The wind at 40 miles an hour is very, very well maintained. We'll try and get to some faster roads too, where I can really test that out fairly. It really goes, you guys just saw that. It's such a hard comparison, this between the Bonneville, because they're both two fantastic bikes that really do different things. They just feel a lot different. I'm not gonna get into this too much, but side note, I would 100% choose this over a Sportster. There's so much more power, so much less shaking much more comfortable bike. I've ridden a couple Sportsters before and while they're fun and they're cool, really like the AMF paint styles on some of them, you just can't compare it to this engine. <laughs> Enough about that. I know there's like a whole Sportster cult out there and <laughs> you guys love your Sportsters. I'm not trying to bash them. I think they're very cool bikes but personally I would definitely choose this over a Sportster. Yesterday I did this same exact route on the Bonneville. I rode 3.30 to probably about 9 o'clock at night. So it was a full day of riding. And I feel very fresh coming off of the Bonneville for so long and then comparing this. They're just two really nice bikes. You can't go wrong with either one of them. I do like how low this one is to the ground. You know, it's kind of a catch-22 because I like it, but I also dislike it. On the Bonneville, I feel like I can see over top of cars and kind of see a little bit like what's going on around me. And with this bike, you're more so you're in the bike. This is such a pretty road. But there is a lot less visibility here. Yes, you're a few inches lower, but it's not a lot. That was one of the reasons that I chose my Bonneville, the, the higher seat height, because I do appreciate being up higher and being able to see stuff. I really liked the aesthetic of the Bonneville as well. That was a really, really big selling point for me. I really like the all blacked out aesthetic of it. And I really like the look of this bike too, but something about the T120 black really spoke to me and it really just fit who I am. I think bikes are really unique to your personality and that one is more so like my personality and this one may be more so like yours. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with this bike. It is a fantastic bike. It's a lot of fun. I remember when I did my very, very first test ride of it when I was comparing the Bonneville and the Scout, I just came off <laughs> the Scout glowing because it was so much fun. I'd never ridden a bike like it before. A little bit of gravel. Yeah, it definitely feels very nimble. Is that a new Rebel? Looked like he had a Batwing fairing with like Honda logos on either side of it. I don't think I don't think so. I don't think that those accessories are available yet. We'll let this guy get a little bit ahead of us and then we'll we'll send it. Wow, that's a beautiful house. I feel like I'm being a little bit wishy-washy comparing this to the 
the Bonneville because I'm not really giving you guys anything concrete to go on other than that it's just a fantastic bike. Indian has really done it here and they've made something great that a lot of people like. No power issues. Oh yeah, there's the engine braking. It really just comes down to aesthetic for me. Like I said, the the Bonneville just fit who I was. Here you can see how I'm flat footing this. You know, I'm very, very comfortable flat footing this. It's a very low seat height very approachable but anyways I think it does just come down to what bike fits you better and what bike looks better in your opinion these are two beautiful bikes they both function just perfectly there is more than enough power they're about the same weight. I feel like maybe this one is a little bit lighter than my bike, but I don't know. I don't know how much gas it has in it. So maybe that's it. Let's see, is there, there's not a gas gauge that I'm seeing. So all I'm trying to say is just get whatever bike you like better. Test ride them both. Whichever one you come off having the biggest smile with, get that one. That's exactly what I did. This bike is really comfortable for me personally, but I can see someone with shorter arms may need the, um, I think it's called the extended reach package. You're a little bit forward as far as your upper body goes, kind of in more of a sporty style position. Whereas the Bonneville, I feel like I'm sitting more upright, but it's not, this bike is not uncomfortable by any means. It's very, very comfortable. And I know that there are a lot of options for aftermarket or even Indian handlebars and different ergonomics packages that you can get. Indian and so many other brands offer a world of saddlebags for this guy. And they look really good too. With the Bonneville, if you're looking for saddlebags, you can get um, the pannier rails or whatever they're called where you can attach a bag to them. It seems like the easiest thing to do with the Bonneville is just get like some throw over saddle bags. If you're looking to get a new bike for commuting and you're comparing these two, either one's going to do great for you. They both have very widespread gearboxes. They both have plenty of power. They both look fantastic. I hate to keep saying this, but it just comes down to your personal opinion. I can't decide this for you. I think I might have missed my turn. Oh, no no piece back. Ouch. I don't know. What, what do you guys like? I've told you my thoughts. They're both fantastic bikes. It's very hard to choose. They're very similar in their power, in their weight, in their functionality. They both have the ability to do two up, no problem. Your passenger will be a little bit more cramped, I think, on the Bonneville. I've ridden as a passenger on the Bonneville and do have room, but I always come off with my knees cramping up because I'm so crunched. Yeah, I think that this does have a bit more torque to it now that I've been riding it more. Another thing that is quite different it's the seating style. This kind of hold your butt in place. You got like a little, like a little miniature backrest, I guess, kind of comes up to the top of your tailbone, holding you in place, which I don't have on the Bonneville. It's just a straight seat. I like that I can move around and change seating positions on the Bonneville, but there is nothing at all to lean back on. Also, I gotta bring it up. I bring it up every video. Heated grips, guys. Heated grips on the Bonneville. Standard. Do we get heated grips on the Scout? Uh-uh. Negative. So you got to put some heated grips on this. Let me know down below in the comments which bike you would pick between the T120, the Bonneville T120, and the Indian Scout, and why. Because for me, like I said, 
It was higher seat and the styling. Those two are the things that really just sold me on it. Oh, look at that tiny dog. It's, oh my goodness. I keep getting distracted. I would love to hear what you guys think, because as you can tell, I'm having a hard time making up my mind, even still, and I have the Bonneville and I love it. I do not ever want to get rid of that thing. The sound of this bike is quite different than the Bonneville with the pea shooters on it, and I do like this sound. I think I would probably get some aftermarket exhaust and make it a little louder, like a two into one or something. Father Bobber's got a nice sound on his Indian Scout Bobber. I want to say again a huge shout out to the folks at Iron Pony, especially Brett. Thank you so much, Brett, for putting this test ride together for me and getting me on this bike so that I can make these videos for you guys. I had a couple of requests to ride on the Indian Scout, so definitely wanted to make that happen. I am looking forward to trying out the Chief whenever those start coming in. Again, like I said, let me know what you guys are feeling. What's your vibe? What's your vibe on the Scout versus the Bonneville and why? Don't just tell me which one. You got to tell me why. I got to know. Well, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, I will catch you on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. See ya.